and welcome to Totally Not Aquatic Ruin Zone on Sonic the Power. The, the Son Sonic the Pocket. So oh, Jesus. Intros are hard, ladies and gentlemen. Sonic Pocket Adventure on the Neo Geo Pocket Color. I am one more sheep yet again, and I think it's time to continue playing through this game. What can I say? And one thing I want to really talk about the music. I don't know, I, I'm really questioning some of the music choices that uh, the developers have used for these zones because uh, in this particular zone the music sort of tends to fit but in plenty of zones that we played through and in plenty of zones we're going to be going to a lot of the music just sort of feels like the developers chucked a Sonic song in there just for the sake of well, no reason whatsoever, they just sort of ch liked the song on the Mega Drive game and chucked in levels where it doesn't fit. I don't know, this is going to be really, really, really apparent when we reach the final zone of the game, but, uh, Oh god, the drowning music's back! Ah, give me a bubble! Bleah, I don't like drowning, meh. I don't think anyone likes drowning, personally, but I could be wrong. It could be someone who's into that sort of thing. And they're a crazy person for doing so, what can I say? What can I say? But anyway, as I was saying, um, in the previous part, when I mentioned the Chaos Emeralds, I mentioned there were seven chances to, uh, Get this get the seven chaos emeralds. I was actually wrong because I completely forgot that there is only six chaos emeralds You have to collect in this one. This is going in the Sonic Game Gear route of uh, Level design, but do not forget there are actually seven chaos emeralds in the game You just only need to collect six of them the seventh chaos emerald. How do we collect that? Well, I will be talking about that later down the line because we do actually have to collect it, but it's not in the special stage. You know, the special stages are only for the first six zones, and the seventh zone is technically the final boss thing. So, uh, yeah, we're not we're not really going to be going after the seventh chaos emerald until the end game. But well, obviously, because we have to do one chaos emerald zone anyway, so that's pretty much a granted. Ah, uh, but I digress. Anyway, much like the uh, Sonic 2 special stages as well, way back in the day, the colours of the special stage can basically tell you what colour Chaos Emerald you are getting. Although, I don't think the Chaos Emerald colour is the same as you would expect. Like, this is a pink special stage, but I really don't think this is a pink Chaos Emerald coming up. I can't remember. If it is, then, uh, well, I'll, I'll call me Chucky and slap my ass. I don't know. <laughs> What am I saying? Call me Chucky and slap my ass. Yeah. But yeah, all in all, I, I still like these special stages, you know. I just really feel they drag on a bit too much longer than they need to, you know, folks. And don't get me wrong, even though this game does reuse pretty much all of its assets, well, not, it doesn't reuse the assets. All the assets in the game are brand new, but it reuses the same themes as Sonic the Hedgehog 2. You know, it's still pretty damn good regardless, you know, it's a good title that's... Considering Sonic the Hedgehog 2 at this point was uh, about, let's see, 94 that came out, wasn't it, so... No, wait, 90... 92 Sonic 2 came out, so... Yeah, at this point, Sonic 2 was over 8 years old, give or take, I think, so... I don't know, I, I'm bad at math, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really want to count in the middle of an LP. So I'll just flash on screen how, how old Sonic 2 was at this time. But, um... Yeah, Sonic 2 is probably quite considered quite the nostalgic title at this point, I suppose, considering, uh... It has been a great deal few years since that game was released, I don't know. So maybe that's why they did a call back to it? I don't know, I can't really say they were lazy about the whole thing, because they, they did remake all of these assets in 8 bits... ...kind of... ...style. You know what, I'm, go I'm just gonna go ahead and call it 12-bit, because that's that's what it is. It's 8-bit looking, but it's a 16-bit system, so fuck it, it's 12-bit. There we go, we got the yellow chaos arm. Yellow? What? Uh, okay. Maybe I was wrong about the colours, but I don't know. I do know the special stages change colour, though, so at least I'm half correct. And I am happy with that victory. <laughs> There we go, Hydro City Zone. This is this works, you know. This is this is this this stage works for for Aquatic Relic, not Aquatic Ruin, Aquatic Relic. Why does it work? Well, obviously it's an underwater stage, so it works. You know, it's built this music built for a water level, so I can take that. You know, sometimes the zones will actually the music themes will fit the zones themselves, but it's not all the time. But. Uh, 
there's an upcoming boss fight in this zone that I do actually quite particularly like, and uh, it's actually I consider it to be one of my favorite favorite bosses of the game. Even though I do always have a bit of trouble doing it, even though back in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, yes, this boss was in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, by the way. Are you hint getting an idea of what this boss is? When back in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I, I I had a completely easy time beating him, and I always did. But for some reason, whenever I play um, whenever I play Pocket Adventure, I always have trouble beating this guy. Well, all I can say about that boss fight is, oh no! <laughs> can you guess who it is yet? Well, I won't spoil it for those of you who do not know, because uh, you know it's a let's play. I'll leave you play along with me. I'll leave you guess and be shocked and awed at who we're gonna come across. But anyway, in terms of difficulty, Aquatic uh, Aquatic Relic is still pretty okay. Now one thing I have to say about Pocket Adventure as a whole, however, is in comparison to Sonic 2, in comparison to Sonic 3, in comparison to the majority of Sonic 1, this is a harder game. This is a much harder game than those titles, because they do chuck a lot more enemies at you. There are a lot more obstacles to face, so you know. Knuckles? Oh no! Eggman did it again, didn't he? You gotta stop listening to him, Knuckles. You would think that after all this time you would learn, but no, no. You, you never learn, do you, Knucklehead? You fucking idiot. Ugh. Oh no. But anyway, yeah, to fight Knuckles, basically what I advise doing is avoiding him at all costs. If you hit him directly, if you try to jump on him directly, chances are you will get hit because his hitbox is a little bit wonky. So what I advise is try to stand in the middle of the room. Whenever he does a spin dash, you just jump over him. And whenever he tries to glide onto you, jump into his feet. If you hit his feet properly, he will get damaged. And if he gets damaged, then boom, Bob's your uncle. He'll drop a Chaos Emerald. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, this Chaos Emerald, I think, uh, I think this Chaos Emerald, what you call it? I don't know. I, I, yeah, Eggman nicks it. There we go. <laughs> That's the train I thought I was trying to get, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, are you all right, Knuckles? Oh, no. Well, we're going to get out of- Ah, my face! Knuckles, fuck you! Yeah, Knuckles just uppercuts us all the way into the sky. It just happens to be a good thing that Tails was flying by, so uh, you guess what level's next, ladies and gentlemen? It's time for Sky Chaser Zone with Azure Lake Zone music. I absolutely adore this theme song, and if anyone doesn't know what this theme song is, even if they've been watching my LPs, then uh, basically this is music that was used in the multiplayer of Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Why haven't I shown off the multiplayer in Sonic the Hedgehog 3? Because I can't be asked to nag people to record it because Jesus Christ <laughs> I don't want to start nagging all my friends hey you want to record Sonic the Hedgehog considering none of my friends are really Sonic fans you know I have a lot of effort trying to get them to record Sonic Shuffle up with me Ugh. but anyway yeah this is pretty much what you expect from uh, Sonic the Hedgehog on the, you know Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is basically the same sort of level that you would expect you have to Go up to go up, press down to go down, collect the rings, avoid the bannocks, and just grab all of the rings. And unlike Sky Chase Zone on the Mega Drive, you do need to collect the 50 rings to get the Chaos Emerald. Because th at the end of this zone, you can get a Chaos Emerald. So be sure to ho keep hold of 50 rings. Be sure to not get clipped by a bannock. Do your best to keep hold of your rings. And trust me, ladies and gentlemen, in this particular Sonic game, that is actually a harder challenge than you would expect because the 50 rings, you can easily find yourself getting clipped by a bandic that just happens to be on top of the screen. I almost got clipped by that bird bandic, for example, you know, folks. It's so easy to lose your rings, it's so easy to lose your chance to get a Chaos Emerald in this particular zone. So just keep at this as much as you can, just keep dodging everything that comes your way and you'll be able to get the Emerald. Trust me, this took me quite a few attempts actually to get it right. <laughs> Seriously, I I, I I had so much trouble getting the Chaos Emerald in this one and it annoys me. Like I always had instances like right below where I killed those two bandits, I just sort of clipped the platform then I sort of booted one of the bandits and you know, as you know, when Sonic's not in a ball, he's vulnerable so I booted a bandit with my foot and it, kick it killed me. It's, ugh. But anyway, you do need to be quick about grabbing this giant golden special ring, because otherwise you may have a bit of issues. What can I tell you? 
What can I tell ya, indeed? And yes, time for another Chaos Emerald special stage thingy. All right, let's get out of here. By the way, I do love the music for the um, Chaos Emerald theme. It, it's so good. It's so good. You know, it's basically the Sonic and Knuckles theme song. It's, it is slightly remixed, so it's not exactly the same theme song. I think it really works for uh, special zones. You know, it's got that sort of mystical do 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 do. You know, it's got that sort of tune to it that sort of fits for these type of things. And oh no, my rings! Yeah. Now, do not fret, the special stage are lenient enough, so if you do get hit by a bomb, then it's, it's not instant game over, it's no, you don't need to cry. You can still get the rings back quite easily, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to worry. You can worry, but you don't need to, what can I tell you? It's not like in uh, Sonic 2, where if you get hit by a bomb, you freak out and that's it, that, that's game over, man. Game over, man! Game over! But uh, you can basically, it, this is all about pattern recognition, you know. If you play this more than once, you can easily get through the special stages just by remembering the pattern. And even then, if you don't know the pattern, if you're playing this for the first time, it's still easy enough to work out what you're meant to do. We work out the patterns as you're running through because the, honestly, it's quite simple. It's quite simple to work out. Although sometimes you may be like me and you have a lot of issues when it comes to certain patterns, like. There was a flower in the middle of all those bombs, and I just jumped over the flower because I panicked. You know, that can still happen quite easily, but, uh, you know, I digress. But it's around this point where the special stages do get hard, because, uh, well, now we're going to have to deal with bombs being in between all of the rings, and rings being in between all the bombs, and we do need to time our jumps and move at a perfect angle, otherwise we are going to be clipped. So, uh, you, like I said, this is where the, this is a hard special stage. It can be quite tricky to get through. Now, if you know what you're doing, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Oh, God. I gotta stop running into things. Otherwise, I'm gonna die. And that's no good. My face. I got so many bruises from this adventure. It, I need to go to the doctors. No. <laughs> uh. Honestly though, this is I think this is the longest special stage out of the lot as well, which can be a bit annoying. But it is fortunate this is the longest special stage out of the lot because I am failing quite miserably here. So collecting, you know, giving more chance to get all the rings, I, I am appreciative of that, you know, ladies and gentlemen. What can I tell you? But there we go, I just about got, this, got the amount of rings needed, so... Uh, you know, they, this, this one gives you a lot of leniency for error, you know, ladies and gentlemen. And there's the pink Chaos Emerald! In the blue and green stage. Okay. Whatever you say. But yeah, that just basically leaves us with one last Chaos Emerald to go for now, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, hey! It's totally not, uh, Wing Fortress Zone. Totally not Wing Fortress Zone. Totally not Wing Fortress Zone, you get the gist. Anyway, the big thing you're gonna have to worry about in this zone are obviously bottomless pits. All of the main MacGuffins and all the main traps from normal Wing Fortress Zone do reply. No, not re reply. They, they don't talk to you. They do reappear in this, so you do need to watch out for these flaming, uh... Things, what are they called? Rockets? Yeah, rocket propellers that are gonna push the ship upwards. If they are bursting, then you will get hurt by them. If they're not bursting, then you can harmlessly touch the fire, which I find really weird. And of course, obviously, massive bottomless pit. Everything below you is a bottomless pit, ladies and gentlemen, so you do need to be careful about that. And one thing that kind of bugs me about this version of uh, this zone in particular, like in comparison to Wing Fortress, I do find this one to be a bit of a maze. I always do find myself getting lost. I always find myself having trouble doing some of the platforming. This is a bit... Actually, no, I would argue this is a great deal harder than actual Wing Fortress, you know, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah, this... this I would, I would honestly say this is a much, 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 much harder Sonic game than Sonic 2 in general. I say in general because there are portions of Sonic 2 that are harder, like the final boss of Sonic 2 is, uh, well, you know, you know how that works. Anyway, I did have to do a bit of editing but there because it takes about a minute or so to backtrack if you fall down this pit. This is an instant death by you, ladies and gentlemen. You do fall into a lower level, which is basically a minute's worth of gameplay backwards. So, you know what? I'm not showing that off. I, I, I missed a jump. I'm cutting past said jump to get to where I was because I'm not, I'm not, well, I'm not babbling for an extra minute over this LP. I'm babbling enough as it, as it is, goddammit. Eesh. 
Ben Wheaties, Clicker Bandics come back in full force as well. Full force? Full force. And uh, they're just as annoying as they always have been. Only, actually, I would argue they're more annoying in this one because the way they shoot things. They shoot their... They always shoot their energy balls in such a pattern that I always find myself getting clipped by them. Although one thing I do appreciate is that if you're curled up into a ball, you'll, you'll automatically go and slide up the turret that the uh, cluckers are in, and you'll automatically just boop them in the face. Unless they do stuff like that, oh for god's sake. I, I, I'm pretty sure I just skipped a, a platforming sequence there, but okay. <laughs> because I had invulnerability flames. Flames? Invulnerability frames, so uh... Yeah, yay! But yeah, as I said, this is a lot more uh, tricky compared to um, Wing Fortress. There's a lot more traps. There's a lot more things that can hurt you. I don't think there's many as many opportunities for instant death as there are in Wing Fortress. But in terms of actual level design difficulty, this one takes the cake. This one's a great deal more challenging in comparison. You know, ladies and gentlemen. So just keep on your toes. Just keep careful. Otherwise, you will get hurt and... Uh, that's no good. You don't want to get hurt. Wow! How oh, cool. They even brought back the windy area. When you go to the windy area, you, you basically press jump whenever you're grabbing on something and they will break apart. whoop de doo You get the general idea. You know how this shit works. I would hope you'd know how this stuff works anyway. It's a Sonic game. It's not very difficult. Well, I, I say that. I do die a lot. and Well, you're not seeing my death, but I did die a lot recording this, so... It, it's still a Sonic game. <laughs> ah, but I digress. Whenever these are stopped burning, uh, bursting, like I said previously, just run underneath them. And uh, I, I, I find that really strange. I'm always really paranoid about those, um, those rocket propulsions because when they, when the flames are actually bursting through, you would think, oh, that's not good. I might not, I better not touch the, the small flame because the small flame is still fire. Fire hurts, but no, you can you can touch a small flame just fine, and it always catches me off guard. I, I I don't know. I always find myself just paranoid about that sort of thing. Anyway, these platforms, if you recall them in Sonic 2, they were just as annoying here. You just need to be ultra, 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 ultra quick with your platform in order to get by, and keep holding right. Otherwise, you'll just continuously looping. You'll just continue to loop around the same area multiple times. Which, uh, admittedly, I did quite a bit. This, 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 not in this playthrough, but in other playthroughs. Like, when I first played this game, I remember I just got stuck in a sequence loads of times because it kept going in circles over and over and over and over again. It's, bleh, it's frustrating as hell. And when you get to these areas, obviously, those, uh, those twirly things, you just... Um, you jump on them whenever they're horizontal. If they're vertical, you can't jump on them. And jump up by here. This is where a lot of people will usually get lost, me included. And we'll be on our way to the boss battle of not Wing Fortress Zone. And the Doomsday Zone music? Okay, that's a bit extreme. It's only Silver Sonic, for God's sake. But yeah, Silver Sonic returns from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And I would argue, because of the smaller screen, because of the limited um, resolution. He is a great deal harder to fight in this version of Sonic. You know, in Sonic Pocket Adventure because he has more invincibility frames. You can, you have to be a lot slower in taking him down. You can't just boop him multiple times like you can in Sonic 2. So, uh, you need to be on your toes with this one. This is actually a great deal much more of a harder fight. It's a good thing you have rings this time around, so otherwise it would be quite difficult. And his uh, strategy is exactly the same as Sonic the Hedgehog 2, he does the exact same pattern. So uh, just keep following the pattern, just keep jumping over him when he spins under you, keep going under him when he spins on top of you, jump out of the way the spikes he shoots out, and uh, he's gonna malfunction and crash through the door. <laughs> okay. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this part. So thank you all for watching, hope you all enjoyed, don't be sheepish pill. And I'll catch you all next time as we take on the finale of Sonic Pocket Adventure. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish. I'll see you all then. Bye!